Good morning and welcome to the POD. Welcome to our live episode of the prophetic word of the day. I know you don't like me saying POD. Then going right into welcome the to our home. Prophetic word of the day. We Okay, the lighting changes because of the way that the sun moves and um, we look darker today than we did yesterday. So I like this. We are sun tan kiss or sun kiss today. Now, you go ahead and do all the hellos. I have to tell her. I have to share this. I hope you have so your notepad, You're so loud. your Bible, yep, 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 yep. Oh my gosh! Are you seriously? These are the things. These are the things. Oh hey, you Lord. want to do a marriage seminar today? Not really. Come okay. on, we can teach them from our crazy. If I go into a marriage seminar today, it's all going to be about killing and have nothing to do with restoration. So <laughs> oh, we're not doing it today. That's not true. you got to let them know we've had an awesome couple of days. God is so good. We have got testimony after testimony. And in an awesome couple of days, we've also had hell. But hey. With, you know, not with each other. No. no, no, not with each other. We're joking. We're teasing around for a couple of things. But in all honesty... God has shown up in ways that I cannot even communicate. As you're jumping on, go ahead and tell us hello, good morning, share this, get the message out, um, and get this all over the place. Help us stop censorship and the censorship of Christian pages and conservative pages. All right. This is your last couple of days to sign up for the uh, partner, to sign up for the partner meeting. The partner gathering coming up July 23rd and 24th. So if you haven't become a partner and haven't gotten signed up, please do so quickly. We're getting all of the preparations ready for that so that we can get the caterers and everything done. Well, they're going to need to know how to sign up. The only way that you can sign up is if you received a personal email from me that you were going to forward back to me with the actual information. This is an exclusive partner gathering only for active partners. So make sure that you are active and all your information is correct on the Tithely platform for partners. Here we go. Uh, PWOD today, Luke chapter 12, 15 through 21 in the New Living Translation. Luke chapter 12, 15 through 21, the New Living Translation. The Lord caught me on something yesterday as you're turning there. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. Let your word be yes. light into us. Let it penetrate all darkness. Today, God, give us insight in your word so that we can be closer to you and know how to communicate and speak with yes. you. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for everything that you are doing. You are a blessing. You are our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, our friend. And today, yes. we're going to know you greater because we are digging into your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. All right. Verse 12, beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Yeah. Then he told a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops, and he said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And yeah. then I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, drink, and be merry. And God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. That's so good. So I want to talk to you about a rich relationship with God. Um, just like another parable we talked about the other day, we see the word guard yourself and beware, which means that we are back into the gatekeeper Mm -hmm. uh, mentality here that we are guarding ourselves from greed. Yes. And I love how the scripture says this in the New Living, for your life will not be measured by your stuff. Yeah. It'll be measured by your character, your integrity, how you've lived your life. Uh, your stuff is not going to stand up at your eulogy at your funeral. Mm -hmm. People are going to do that. And if you don't haven't built the right relationships then all that stuff is going to be given to somebody or just whatever, going to be just, just go away. So we have to make sure that we're not living our life, measuring ourselves with things or stuff, but measuring ourselves with the Lord. That's now, so good. I am going to prove to you that God does not have a problem with you having stuff, being prosperous and blessed. 
yes. through the scripture we just read. Are you ready? Here we ready. Go. Number one, the Bible said this man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. Okay. Okay? So I guess it's a number one. It's not really, I don't have like number one, blah. But here's what we know about him. He had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. It says, the Greek says that his field bared well and brought forth good mighty harvest. Mm -hmm. As we read the scripture and Jesus is giving us the instruction and telling us the parable of this man, when he speaks on the fertile ground, the good field, all of the crops and all of the harvest, God is, Jesus is good with this. Mm -hmm. He's good with it. He does not rebuttal. He does not say anything in a negative way about this man owning stuff. Nope. Or, having, they, they or, or, be being, or being blessed. The second thing is he had big barns. Okay. That means he had a lot. He had homes. Yep. Cars, boats, trucks, mm -hmm. etc. He yeah. had things. Yeah, he did. Okay. What he had was more than sufficient. He had mm -hmm. abundance. Yeah. Then... Watch this. He even tore down the barns that he had in order to make room for more stuff. And watch this. Mm -hmm. God was okay with that. Jesus was fine with that. He did not rebuttal him mm -hmm. having stuff. He did not rebuttal him tearing down the barns he had in order to build bigger barns. People yeah. are like, I can't believe that you would tear down this building to build a larger building or, or you would tear down your home to build a bigger home or you would do all the, okay, spoken by somebody who is jealous of what other people have. Mm -hmm. Spoken by somebody, I, I, that, that is hyper religion right there when somebody says, well, that money could have been spent overseas. You wouldn't have spent that money overseas. You'd have used it for something else. Yep. You just didn't want to see somebody else use it. Okay. That's a whole other story. Number three. Mm -hmm. Here's the third thing. So let, let, let's go slow. Jesus didn't have a problem with him having stuff yeah. and being prosperous. He was cool with it. Jesus didn't have a problem with him tearing down barns and build big, building bigger barns to put stuff in those barns. He was cool with it. Uh -huh. Number three, the man says, I will then look at what I've done and what I've produced and what I have built what I have stored up and say it is enough and I will sit and chill for the rest of my life. Now, Jesus has a problem. Say it again. The man says, I will store up, mm -hmm. eat, drink, be merry, talk to myself and say, look at all that you have done and I will sit back, kick back, relax, and say, look at all you, now I can coast through life. And Jesus says, now I have a problem. Wow. Now I have a problem with you. He got lazy. Now let me tell you, let me show you something. Mm -hmm. None of these things happened. Okay. They were all false. Whoa. Chris is good. None of these things actually took place. Jesus did not say that the man, now Jesus said he had wealth. Mm -hmm. and, and he was growing good crops. Mm -hmm. The thought came in, well, I'll do this to take care of my crops. Then I will sit back and do nothing and relax. And the Lord steps in at the fault and says, you're a fool. Wow. Because you will die tonight. Now watch what happens. Was the man actually going to die then? No. He said, but you're going to die based upon what you just thought of because all your work will be lost. Thoughts can produce death. Yeah. Not based upon the thought, but based upon the thought's completion. Okay. So Jesus says, the way you're thinking right now is producing death in you. Because your thoughts. Because your thoughts are about to lead you to a place of complacency. Wow. And as if you have arrived and you've done all these things, which I'm cool with. But what you haven't done 
is you haven't built something. Now watch this. What it, also, let me get back out. Let me go back to this. It's not based upon the thought. Mm -hmm. It's based upon the thought's completion of you doing it, especially if the thought was outside of the will of God. Wow. So, in the last verse, what is a fool to Jesus? Someone who stores up earthly wealth without building a rich relationship with Jesus. Wow. That's, that's the key. I'm going to blow all this anti-prosperity gospel out the water. I'm going to blow the anti-prosperity gospel. Jesus is fine with you having fields, harvest, mm -hmm. abundance, mm -hmm. increase. He's fine with it. He's fine with you tearing stuff down, building bigger stuff. What he's not good with is when you do it and kick back and say, I'm fine with it. Now I'm good and I can coast through life. Let me tell you what happened. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you a parable before I go into my last statement. I know a church that I was a part of that grew huge. This church increased, tore down or built other buildings and got big. Finances were coming in. Everything was rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. And then they kicked their feet up, set back, put it in cruise control. Mm -hmm. Once they put it in cruise control, all of mm -hmm. the big financial people started dying. People quit giving. Yeah. Stuff stopped. And all hell broke loose. Mm -hmm. Why did it break loose? Because they thought we had arrived. And we don't have to work anymore. We don't have to really work no more. All we got to do is show up, do a little here, do you, a little you there. You have another PWOD about that, about uh, whenever you stop working, mm -hmm. everything the working stops. Thing. Yeah. And it's crumbling and going down. Now watch this. Jesus wants you to have a rich mm -hmm. life. He wants you to be rich in wealth. Yes. If it wasn't true, then the Bible wouldn't say that uh, Paul says that it's, or James says that it is my heart that you would prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. First, he talked about prosperity in all the things. Mm -hmm. He's okay with you being rich in health. He wants you rich in your marriage, rich in your children, rich in your church. But he says you better be rich in your relationship with Jesus. I know many people are saying, well, you know, and we're going into the, you can't love two masters. I know, that's another parable. Someone can't just love asked, money and you can't love Jesus, so you got to love one or the other. Someone, Julie Netter, Netterville, I love you. She's from the well. We know her. Um, so am I wrong to desire retirement? No. <laughs> two no. totally different there, things, sister. I pray for on. you to have retirement. Here's the thing. Your retirement means you've retired from working, you haven't retired from the kingdom. Two totally, Two different, totally different things. Two totally different things. Now me, as a five-fold minister, there's no such thing as retirement. We, we have no plans of ever retiring. I'm, I have no plans of ever retiring. I'm going to preach. I'm going to teach. I'm going to do all of this until the day that I die. Yes. Because there is no retiring the kingdom. Yeah. So you don't retire the kingdom. You may retire your a job, your job, yeah. your career that you're working at, and you retire, and then you have the finances to go and do other things for the kingdom. I'm talking about those that have built an empire and not built a rich relationship with the Lord. Now, Gwen said doing the Lord's work, okay? Not just doing the Lord's work. Because building a relationship with the Lord has nothing to do with doing the Lord's work. Are you seeing that? Building a relationship, a rich relationship with Jesus has nothing to do with doing the Lord's work. You do the Lord's work after you've built the, 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 the rich relationship with Jesus. Because you want to do those things. But the rich relationship with Jesus is, is that you have such a, a, uh, 
a time of conversation and communion with the Lord to where that relationship is so close, so intertwined, so just yes. filled with love and compassion that now, guess what? Everything else is such a blessing unto the Lord. Yeah. You're like, God, thank you for all of this. You blessed me with these yeah. things. But what? But I've not allowed myself mm -hmm. to kick back and let things coast me through life because I built such a rich relationship with you. Here's what now let's Jesus says, I'm cool with all your stuff. I'm cool with you being blessed. I'm cool with you tearing down and building bigger buildings yeah. in order to put your stuff in it. <laughs> I'm fine with that. What I'm not cool with, I'm not cool with you kicking back, doing nothing, mm -hmm. and not spending time with me. Mm. Read it. A person is a fool who stores up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Did he say you can't store up earthly wealth? Nope. Nope. He said you can't do it without him. Wow. Because listen, listen. When you're storing up all... Aren't you supposed to have an inheritance for, for your, your children's, children's children? children? Whoa, stop, pause. That scripture in and of itself completely does away with those that come against the prosperity gospel. Because in order to Well, have, let's stop, let's stop. Because if we say prosperity gospel, some have taken prosperity well, and now to a... Um, they've jacked with it. A lie and yeah. deceit to just get rich. All yeah. right, now we understand that's, that. That's I'm not sitting totally here promoting different. that. But there are those out there that are blessed, and God has blessed them tremendously. I'm so but glad you're they explained. are given more than people we that could ever give into other places and ministries. Mm -hmm. And God keeps blessing them; they keep giving away. God keeps blessing them; they keep giving away. Yes. All right, just because Jesse the Planet has a big plane, how many planes has he given away? <laughs> We how know. many homes has he given away? We know. How many cars? Yep. Has, how many hundreds of thousands of dollars has he sown yes. into other ministries and stuff? Okay, so before you start going, nah, you better go check it out. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that. I'm saying that everything you do. Now watch, your level of, of richness and field might be a smaller number than somebody else's. But to you, you're rich. Yes. Okay, so in doing so, you can say, I have all these things, but what is greater than the things that I have, what is greater than the field, what is greater than the harvest, what is greater than the buildings that I have built and all the stuff in it, what's greater than my home, my cars, my boat, in which I don't have one, but what is greater than these things, my relationship with Jesus, which is why he has allowed me to keep it and which is why he has allowed me to live long. You want to know why God wants to bless you for so that you can live long, so that you can be a blessing to others. That's right. I want to, I want to be so financially blessed that I am the shall man. We go back and watch the peewad on the shall man, to where I can be the one that gives into yes. man's bosom because the Lord directs me to go give, and in doing so, I'm a blessing. And as a blessing, I become a bigger blessing. But what all boils down to this. If I'm going to be rich in things, I better be rich in relationship with Jesus. Yes. Amen? I better be in a rich relationship with Jesus. Yes. And when I do that, man, I'm going to see phenomenal things. And when, well, everything God, switches. when God directs me yes. in an area, I'll know because we have such a great relationship. People might look at it and be like, look how haughty he is. Look at this and look. You don't understand me and Jesus' relationship. He's the one that provided all of this so that yes. I can be a greater blessing to others as well <laughs> and show them all of this has been done 
because of my relationship with Jesus and nothing else. Amen. What a word. Philip just said, what a word. Amen. 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 You know, and I also want to, I feel like the Holy Spirit wants me to add this, Chris. Do not judge what other people might have because you don't know. Just because whenever you brought up about Jesse Duplantis and, and we could name multiple other ministries, you don't know what they've given away and what they've sacrificed for that blessing. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would challenge you not to judge the material things that you see others with because you don't know the shoes that they've walked in. Mm -hmm. You don't know the struggles and the mountains that they've Where they had came to climb. From. Yeah, you don't know. This house that we have, you see the stuff behind us. Dude, if you saw where we first lived <laughs> for the first five years of marriage. We lived in the hood. I mean, we lived in a rundown apartment. We oh, had yeah, a I forgot about the very apartment. small 900-square-foot uh, home, maybe 800-square-foot home mm -hmm. in Louisiana. Then we lived in a 800-square-foot parsonage in the hood. Yep. Then With drive-bys. With drive-by shootings That's and all of that. That's a whole other story. Then the Lord blessed us into a home. There's still a small home. Mm -hmm. Then we came to Chattanooga and Lord blessed us with a home. But, but pause. You didn't see the times. And I, I want to share this because we want you to know. We cleared out our entire savings account. All we knew is the paycheck that was coming two weeks later. Oh, well. Cleared we, out every penny. When we were trying to get, when we were trying, when we were asking God to get us out of the hood and move us into a home, I gave everything away. All of our savings. Everything. Every penny. Every everything. penny. And after I gave it all away, God opened the door for the home. And then guess what else we gave away? We gave away a car. We right now currently only have one vehicle because we recently in the past, you know, couple of years have given away another car to someone else who needed that car. And so we have sowed and sowed and sowed and sowed. Yeah. So this is our story. I know many of you out there have sown as well, but there's those of you that may be watching the live right now are going to watch the replay later. I challenge you. So here's what Don't I want to Don't judge say. other people. <laughs> Do you have a rich relationship? If not, that's what we need to pray for right yes. now. Father, we thank you for everything that you have blessed us with, everything that you have given us, and the more that you want to give us because you said abundance is coming. But Lord, we do not want to kick back and try to coast through yes. the rest of our lives. We want to have a yes. rich relationship with you. We want people to look and say, how did you get all of this? And yes. we would say, it has nothing to do with my work, has nothing to do with how I, you know, it has everything to do with, I had such a rich relationship with Jesus. And because of that, I get to enjoy what the Lord has given me. And yes. I am a blessing to others so that they may take part in the blessing that the Lord has given me. So today in the name of Jesus, we are richly blessed in relationship with Jesus Christ. We receive it today in Jesus' name. Yes. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something today. Out of this word, I'm going to ask you to pray and ask Holy Spirit about sowing a seed. I just now we, the website Now, we've talked there. to people about being partners and all of that, but I have not asked for people to sow a seed. We're at a place right now where we are embarking on some new things, getting stuff set up for our partners and, and for the ministry. And we're at a place right now financially where we feel the Lord say, sow a seed right now. So we've sown a seed. And we're asking you to sow a seed into Chris Brooks Ministries. By doing so, we stand in agreement with you that God will richly bless you and that you will have that rich, abundant blessing with him. Yes. So you pray the Holy Spirit, ask him what you can do. Sow that seed today. Today. In this word, believing in this word for you. Yes. Your family. Amen? Amen. The website is chrisbrooksministries.com forward slash partner. It's going to actually take you to the page where you can make a one-time donation or you can partner monthly. But today is the day you're going to hit whenever you click into the options. You're going to see the little sidebar where it, sa it says partner. It has several drop downs and it says donation. I want for you to go into there and click that Did option. Change it to and they're they're changing. Our website guys changing all these things in the next couple of days so it's soon gonna say give but right now it says donate and pray and ask Holy Spirit what seed it is you can sow I think that that's a now because it's a now word because man. whenever you unite your faith with this word there's something happening on this word there's such a joy and a peace in my home right now on this because we are rich relationship 
Yeah. I mean, today we're coming together with our family to do a discipleship training, and it is so rich and so filled with the glory of God. It's ridiculous. I want you to be a part of it. Amen? Yes. All right. Go do that, and we declare the blessing of the Lord over you today, declaring you're going to have a wonderful, incredible day. Caleb Ebner, love you, brother. Um, everybody on here, we love you guys. So grateful. All of our partners, so we love excited. you guys. Can't wait to see you in a month. Remember, if you haven't become a partner and you hey, want Sarah. to come to the partner gathering, you got to sign up by Friday. Actually, it's Monday. By Monday, because mm -hmm. I'm wrong. It's All right. Okay. We love you. We'll see you here tomorrow for another P-Wad, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. Remember, if it doesn't challenge you, it will not what? Change you. We love you. See you in the morning. Be blessed.